So, there's been a lot of talk about what's going to happen once the lockdown gets lifted, right? I'm of the belief that the first party that's going to be on is going to be out of this world, right? It's going to be insane. It's going to be nuts. Um, it's going to be full on debauchery and uh, people are going to let go in a way that they haven't let go in a while. Um, the spirits will be high. It'll be electric. It'll be euphoric. It'll be sensational to be in that space. Those first couple of weeks once lockdown's lifted and people are allowed back in nightclubs will be magical. But there has been I, I feel as if there's a pop there's a segment of the population that are a bit too eager to go out right and i've said from the beginning that i'm not opposed to anyone going out i'm not a tit tattle i'm not going to snitch on anyone i'm not going to walk past a park and take a picture of you while you're you know drinking your red stripe and picking your feet i don't give a shit but i'm still of the belief that for myself personally there's no there's nothing on the outside that's worth me risking my life for just because I'm bored at home, there's nothing really. I'm a bit, you know, I'm, I'm an, I'd say I'm an extroverted introvert in that regard, where there's nothing out there that I'm really willing to risk my life for to do. And again, I'm no, I'm in no rush. And two, I can have the real product. And two, I can have the actual real experience. I'm in no rush to get some sort of half baked kind of, you know, uh, copy of what I was used to beforehand. Now I know our lives not going to be the same once COVID is over. It's still going to be changed, right? We're still going to be have to adapt to a new normal. I understand that, but a new normal shouldn't be us, you know, dancing six meters apart. It shouldn't be us trying to make open, trying to make a beer garden into a dance floor. It shouldn't be us doing all these other nonsense things just so you can go outside listen to loud music. That shouldn't be what. It should be about and this video is another indication of it this is a video from um resident advisor right um actually they've actually got a video on it they've actually got a whole article let's actually read the whole article but let's let's watch the video and then we read the whole article but this is from resident advisor it says in what might be the first dance party in europe in months good and played a small socially distanced crowd in months the last night we're speaking uh, with the promoters on how they play. Pull this one off. More details forthcoming. So this is video clip, exclusive video clip from Virgin Advisor of Gerdy Anson playing in a party. <laughs> Okay, the vibe is amazing. It's electric. It's giving me actually goosebumps watching it. It's great to see people actually dancing and having a good time in the rave. That's one thing you notice, right? People actually dancing. I guess the, the time they spent away from the dance floor, you know, has made them realize that, oh, dance floors are for dancing, not for taking pictures and twirling around your friends and pretending you look hot, which people are doing there. But, you know, it is what it is. People are dancing, having a good time. Cool. That's great. But to be dancing with these little circles, so they're each basically, I guess they're all two meters apart. I have far you need to be they've all got masks and shit and they're all twirling within their own little pre-designed predisposed space they have on the dance floor which to me is the most saddest thing i've seen in my life it's super depressing it's in one way it's you know again ingenious from the promoters and from gerd and anyone involved in it to get this dance to get it sorted but in terms of what i want from a raving experience it's not something that i'd want to do it's not something that i'm willing to go outside for no way i'd much rather it be you know half capacity move where you want than us have to be inside social distancing and trying to make that a thing it's just not a vibe for me i can't do it and this is an entire article i think from resident advisor talking about the whole situation but again like i said i'd much rather wait um and, and i think it is a good indication it is maybe a good um it maybe just kind of back up my point I made in a previous show where I said I think another way promoters and event managers and whatever they may be will get around it in terms of putting on raves will be that if they if they're able to have open air parties right in places that you know where the temperature kind of permits you could get away with having more people under a quote-unquote tent where you can kind of you know leave at you know any number of exits because it's open um then you would have to in a closed, I think, route arena because we'd have to say or have to agree that nightclubs aren't going to come back until next year, right? Maybe middle of next year, um, possibly until a vaccine is found. You no know, insurance company is going to want to be liable or kind of stick their neck in the line to have people in a closed, confined space under a roof somewhere and get sued. Whereas I don't, I'm not sure where the legality stands if you get, you know, catch corona in the middle of an open air party somewhere in the middle of a park. It's quite hard to kind of knock anyone for getting it so 
that might be a way they'll get around it but if there's a solution too to spray paint the floor with little circles you have to dance on count me out man i don't want anything to do that whatsoever i'd much rather wait watch a live stream drink a couple of whiskeys and top my fingers in my living room personally so this is from Resident Advisor said Gerd Janssen played a social distance open air party in Germany last night um, Gerd Janssen played a social distance open party in Germany last night um, Munza venue Cocoon sorry Coconut Beach a local promoter Taka Takatuka hosted what might be the first dance party in Europe for months yeah considering my proper last rave was Bergheim what in like the end of March this is that, that feels like a, a complete lifetime ago isn't it it says here the lineup included uh, Steve Sticks and Kai Lorenz, Torsten Kagan, Torsten Kager, so in addition to the running back of a label head. In order to enable such distancing, it says the 22,000 capacity outdoor venue put up to 100 tickets for sale for 70 euros each. Bloody hell, which included 21 euros worth of food and drink. <coughs> which might not be a bad deal, isn't it, bro? could that be a thing though once clubs reopen that they start doing this thing where they pike the prices up in con you know ridiculous amounts so that you feel like you're supporting the scene so you're quote unquote saving our scene is that a thing because that would be horrible if then again this is a good approach i think you know for a berlin venue to give you 21 dollars 21 euros worth of free food in your ticket i think that's a lot of food you lose usually they're not going to be tight on it but hopefully that's not a thing that you know gets done by other clubs in terms of just you know as a weird way for us to save the scene when they're just lying in their own pockets i hope not let's see um the event description says coconut beach would have had sell ha would have had to sell tickets for 20 times that listed price which acknowledged was already stretched for many to match the pre-pandemic revenue um of course we understand this is quite a quote of course we understand that some of our guests are a bit disappointed as they don't have the money to join the venue manager director thomas piper top resident advisor as soon as the regulations for live events will be raised to 250 we will lower the ticket price which is fine in it which is fine i guess i think if you're that desperate to go outside and if someone's willing to offer you yeah if you're that desperate to go outside and take the risk and someone's willing to open their space to accommodate you and they charge you know two times what the value is or three times you have to make an informed decision and you can't complain if they do that because you know you've agreed into this weird little dance that you're doing i've got the space you want to come and dance how much you want to pay that's okay and if they didn't say later on we'll lower the prices once everything gets back to normal that's fine but hopefully it doesn't remain like a thing that happens as a weird way to save our scene because it's not really you know it's not saving our scene it's saving your club which is fine but you know let's call it what it is um it continues here despite the hefty price hike the event sold out in 15 minutes well done man going on sale may 18th may 16th sorry djs also charged lower fees with jansen cutting his by 80 percent bloody hell he came out for 20 percent of his fee that's mad well done for him man joint private broadcasting wd reports piper told wdr that they would not be making any profit from this event with the event goal being to cover costs and not to send and not to send a sign of life and to send a sign of life okay that's brilliant that's great to hear that's kind of like the old school um kind of you know ideology or you know the old school mindset from when i used to promote parties right it was just so you could be cool amongst your friends and also cover cost as long as you could pay your djs and you know make sure you cover your printing costs for your flyers or whatever it be in stickers and you your friends had a good time and they you know had lots of pictures they can show on social that was already a win you didn't really care about you know making the big bucks really because you have always you weren't in it for that and you weren't ever going to make that anyway so what's the point of worrying about it so it continues it says um all the attendees were required to wear masks those who did not have a face covering could buy one at the door the event um, description says the venue would make all the effort to be hygienic once inside the venue which was only half in use for a better atmosphere ravers were assigned a table and a dance floor choke circle the only space they were allowed to remove face mask all set at 1.5 meters apart bars were marked to indicate safe spacing and fitted with purpose shields to protect staff who are wearing masks in accordance to germany guidelines the raised dj booth had also been paid by barrier on the dance floor non-cash methods of payment were encouraged but not required okay awesome so to eliminate any touch points but whew, i wonder what people would do when they were going to the toilets hey I wonder if everyone's on their best behavior in that regard. What do you do for a social distance party with, you know, only 20% of the occupants in there? What do you do? Do you have someone manning the loose as well to make sure no one's doing anything naughty and wiping down the surfaces? Or do you have little wet wipes next to the toilet so people can wipe them down once they finish doing what, you know what? 
Oh, that's funny. It says, I'm, it says, it continues here. I'm well aware of the fact that this is by no means an ordinary party, Goat Jansen told Ari. Again, Goat Jansen is one of my favorite DJs too, by the way. Let that be known. He's one of the best DJs on the scene. Um, one of my favorites. Very versatile, very entertaining DJ. Really good. Um, you know, um, he had an amazing career as a journalist actually for a bit, which he kind of poo poos, but I thought his opinions and his views on music were very interesting. Did some solid interviews on Red Bull Music Academy back in the day. Just a general solid egg. Um, went to actually go see him at XOY her too a few weeks or a few months ago it continues here it says um, i was already invited to play that date before the pandemic or whatever you want to call it happen so when i got the call to play for a considerably shrunken edition 100 people only i thought of a prank at first and after some reflection on it i agreed to do it i felt that it was kind of my duty to do my part in helping thomas piper for doctor's coconut beach and his crew pull this off yeah it was good it's good to have like the first one go off in it without a hitch Congrats to them. Um, Jansen continued. Whatever you take of with whatever you whatever you take on all of this, part of this is how to deal with it and how to make things possible again that were taken as a given or taking all into account it went really well a bit of sweet mixture of nostalgia and hope i had fun and i hope the dancers too it felt like a reassurance that it can go in some way shape or form until things get back to normal here's a video from the party that we obviously saw earlier so yeah it's a feel good factor again like i said but for me it's super depressing i wouldn't want to go to it myself i'd much rather wait until things get back to normal but i also understand the need for the bar owner and the event booker or whatever it may be of these spaces to get things back and running some way shape or form especially you know with people's wages to pay and the scene to revive you just want to feel as if you're back doing the things you were doing before like i said like jansen mentioned that you thought were given so um great to see it happening great to see him starting again but i would like to see raving season come back the way i at least envisioned it at least previously in my previous life where before the pandemic spread didn't do any kind of dancing in a circle but you know fair play to everyone involved it looked like fun for those out there i guess but yeah that looks like the, you know that that is at the end of the rave in it right or the big or the start or, or when you come in too early or when you leave or when you're there too late that's what it basically looks like um yeah i, I just can't do it man i just cannot i need more people i need it to be darker um, I need it more dingy. I need it more. I need to be more on the edge. But hey, what?